Hello, 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 my dear friends of the orderly chaos. How are you doing today? Well, another episode of the Chinese Zodiac, and today we're diving into the rabbit. So the question I always ask you at this stage is, do you know your Bartze, your Chinese horoscope? I mean, you may know the animal of the year you were born in, but do you know that you have three more animals which are really important for your personal path in life? So you see, the animal sign that you're born under in the year is just one of four, because you're also born under an animal sign in the month, in the day, and in the hour. And that's why it's called Barza, eight characters, or four pillars of destiny, it's also sometimes called. So would you like to know more about them? Let me know in the comments if you do. And if you like what you see in here, like it, share it, follow it, subscribe, whatever you feel like, and on whichever channel you're just watching this. So today I'm going to introduce the rabbit to you. And if you're born in the years 1951, 63, 75, 87, 99, 2011, this could be for you. So please be aware that we use a different calendar in this case, generally speaking. If you are born before February 4, which is the new year in the Chinese solar calendar, solar, the beginning of spring, the Chinese new year that you know that is celebrated is the lunar new year. For the Bartze, for the horoscope, we're looking, we're using and looking for the solar calendar. So if you're born before February 4, then you actually still belong to the year before. So the rabbit itself, well, it governs also, by the way, most of the month of March and the hours between five and seven. So you already know that whenever you're born, what animal governs your month and your hour. The rabbit is born under the yin wood element. And depending on which of the rabbits you are, you will also get another element. It could be water, wood, fire, earth, or metal. So you see, there are actually not 12 animals in the, not just 12 animals in the Chinese zodiac. There are actually 60 because we've got 12 animals and each of them can have another additional element, five elements. So actually we've got 60 different pillars that could be in your horoscope, <clears throat> depending on which additional element, also known as heavenly stem, comes with it. Um, I already told you before that depending on what the other pillars are, you may have a little bit of challenges, you may have a harmony. So who is a very good friend of the rabbit is actually the dog. Um, it is not so much a good friend with the rooster. So if you have two that those two in your bar there, there may be one or the other challenge. And also <clears throat> a rooster year is a bit more challenging um, than a dog year for the rabbit. But hey, beware, challenging also means opportunity. So if I say that a dog year is a bit more convenient for the rabbit, it can also mean that the rabbit goes, oh yeah, I don't have to do much. Yeah, that's nice and easy and not growing. So growth comes with when the opportunity calls. And the opportunity calls in a clash year, which is a rooster year, but they're still a little bit down the road. And there's a harmony with the pig and the goat. So for the advanced of you, you know how to choose your month and your day um, to have a harmonious time. So the rabbit itself. Well, the rabbit belongs to the signs of virtue and intelligence. Yeah. You're really feeling good there, don't you? It's, has, it's more on a quiet and peaceful side in life. Um, doesn't like any sort of unpleasantness. That's why I mentioned that clash year where the rabbit is really challenged but can grow. So take it as an advantage. Um, the rabbit likes to steer clear of arguments and disputes. Um, he's very much a pacifist and he's, he's, very, he's having a very calming effect on his surrounding. Um, that's what he prefers to. So he likes to have a good discussion and he is quite diplomatic. But because he likes to remain on good terms with everyone, um, they sometimes are a bit opportunistic. 
they sometimes are, they just want the peace. And so they don't dig any further. And, you know, that in a group of people, that's an amazing thing to have, um, opportunistic or not, but they can actually pacify a lot of the other energies. I mean, we talked about the tiger yesterday. So you, if you have a tiger and a rabbit in a group, then you will sudden, you will really spot the differences between those two in a discussion. Um, yeah, um, the rabbit is also quite sensitive and like the tiger, interestingly, cannot, uh, does not cope very well with criticism for different reasons than the tiger, but the outcome is the same. So um, the rabbit also doesn't like to take risks. That's where it's, again, opposite of the tiger. Um, so he's not that good with change. Again, the clash year or the clash month with the rooster is his or her challenge then. Um, Work-wise, the rabbit is quite methodical and loyal. So you have, it makes a very good administrator. Um, the communication skills are really good because we talked about how they like to be friends with everyone and how they are quite diplomatic. So um, if you, again, as an employee, employer, um, if you have a rabbit underneath you, then use the communication skills and the way they can um, arrange a group, the way they can, in a meeting, really suss out where are the, the, the points where we don't want to go today because it's just not taking you anywhere. So really making use of those skills is amazing. If you can do that as a manager or as an employer, that works really well. Um, on a private level, um, the, the rabbit li really likes his home and um, likes to spend a lot of money to have a nice and nice a nice rabbit hole, so to speak, and likes its comfort. They really like it comfortable. And they are collectors at times, so it can be that that goes overboard. I mean, you know, like with every of the um, animal signs, it needs to be balanced. There is lots of room on one or the other side. The rabbit also, by the way, likes, um, takes care of this appearance. It's usually smart. And um, so the relationship to others is really important to them. Um, he's not the most faithful sign on the planet. Um, but again, that I think that really depends on the other signs because they like the peace and they like their home and the comfort. Um, so, and they don't like to take that much risks. But you know, the rabbit has one thing. The rabbit is one of the lucky signs in the Chinese zodiac. So the rabbit is used to get away with stuff. The rabbit is used to be quite lucky in any situation and always finding a door out um, or something like that. So that's why they don't see it as risk as such. Um, but yeah, that's their character and that's just what it is. So all in all, I'd say the key word here is talented, but to bring the talent to the surface, they need to become aware that they sometimes have to change a bit, that they sometimes have to risk a bit, that they sometimes have to really, um, challenge themselves. So that's one of the things. So the rabbit itself is one of the happiest signs. So they appear really happy amongst friends and safely with their established social circles, love their peace and are seldom confrontational. So that's probably the bottom line of the rabbit with the yin wood quality. Uh, but again, this would be the case only for a personality if there were just one sign, if they had just one sign in their bar. So, and as I told you in the beginning, there are four signs. Because this is not the case, you will hardly find a person where this description fits 100%. There are tendencies, but are not 100%. The influences of those other animals and the other pillars and in time, which year are we in? Which month are we in? Which day are we in? So today, for instance, we're having a rabbit day. 
hi to all the rabbits. Um, but this is important time and everything as well as the environment, because please remember, the heaven luck, your barter, makes only 33% of your luck. The other 66% coming from your environment, that's your earth luck, what you probably know is what you know is Feng Shui, and your main luck, your choices, beliefs, thoughts, and behaviors, how you've been raised, the experiences um, uh, you've made there, the friends you've gathered around you, the family that you come from. And so this, this is the so-called trinity of Feng Shui. It's what shapes you in all the ways that you are. And nothing is written in stone. You're able to change, right? So your bots can tell you when and what to change, when it is easier and when it's not worth even trying to bump with your head against the proverbial wall. So in the end, it is all about doing the right thing at the right place in the right time. So all the bots can give you those directions and can give you those hints of what to do and what, what is easier for you to achieve and when. And this is where I really would like to encourage you to find out more about your Barca, about what you've been given by birth and to go into that direction. And depending on which pillar you have this animal, it will either appear in your surrounding, in your job, with your spouse, with your children, with your dreams and aspirations. That is where it can point you to. So I hope that was helpful. Hi, all the rabbits out there. And um, I'll see you again tomorrow. And tomorrow, we're going to dive into our next sign, which will be, let me have a look, you will find out soon. It will be so much fun. It's one of the signs that I personally like. Guess why? <laughs> we're looking into the dragon. So tomorrow we're going to have a dragon session. And let's see what the dragon can bring to the plate. See you tomorrow. Bye.